Local stories, local people. We're taking you inside Western Mass News. It's the Even Better Western Mass Podcast with Dave Matson. Hi, I'm Dave Matson, and welcome to Even Better Western Mass, the podcast of Western Mass News. It's a chance to talk with the newsmakers and people making a difference in our communities each and every day in more than just sound bites that you'd see in a news story, in depth interviews about what they do, who they are, and why they do what they do. Of course, we like your opinions too on the podcast we've aired and who you'd like to see as guests on future podcasts. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. My guest this week is Springfield Mayor Dominic. Sarno. Dominic Sarno elected to his fifth term as mayor in November, making him the longest serving mayor in Springfield history. We talk about the job of being mayor of Springfield, the third largest city in the state of Massachusetts, how he got into politics, and just what he likes about being mayor of the city of Springfield. I should note that the interview with Mayor Sarno was recorded before the death of his father. Thank you. We've known each other for a long time. Yeah. I've, I've really. Uh for the longest time, wanted to have the opportunity yeah. to just sit down, the two of us, yeah. with no commercial breaks, okay, yeah. no sound bites or anything else, and be yeah. able to just talk to you. But by the way, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, now the longest serving mayor in Springfield history. Yes, and I'm, I'm uh, honored by that, and I'm privileged to be the mayor of the city of Springfield. I'm proud, I'm proud for my, my parents, my mom, God rest her soul, and uh, uh, my dad who's battling uh, some difficult health challenges right now because, uh, you know, they, they, they came over here from another country and uh, survived underground at their younger days uh, during the Nazi occupation, World War II, and, and uh, um, really could never finish any formal education, own businesses, barber shop and seamstress shop, and they always stressed about um, being respectful, you know, and... Uh, uh, being able to give back, uh, help people out, try to give back to your community. So I'm, I'm, when people say, geez, you must be really proud mayor to, uh, to be the long, you know, now to become the longest serving mayor in the city of Springfield's history, and I say I'm proud for my my parents. And, and Dave, I didn't do it alone either. I mean, I sure. I have a great team. You know, I uh, many times I'll get a lot of accolades. I don't mind constructive criticism at all. The buck stops with me, but I, you know I've had a great team and, and some outstanding people in my administration. Right. Now, you, your mom and dad must, your dad and your mom yeah. must have been so proud uh, to see their son. You know, yeah. the, again, considering where they came from and yeah. they had to go through to get to this country, yeah. uh, become the mayor of the, the third largest city in Massachusetts. Yeah. And it's uh, I showed my dad. I had communiques that came from Brigiliano, Italy, uh, and uh, it's only a small. Uh, Town of about five thousand people. Though here in the Springfield area, we probably have thirteen to fifteen thousand Brigidenes in the area, southern Italy. And uh, I showed them the communique that came from there. How uh, proud they were that one of their, you know, own uh, again now becomes the longest-serving mayor in Springfield's uh, history. And I know you're also a food connoisseur too. <laughs> and I get a kick out of all the food that we eat now and we ate as kids, which was. And the oak was considered, uh, 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 it was mainly considered uh, peasant food. If you go out to a restaurant, it's, it's gourmet food now. It's gourmet food. Just to fill your bellies. Yeah. You know, when you think back to young Diamond and Sarno growing up in Springfield, yeah. what did you want to do? Well, again, I'm Springfield born, bred, and proud. And uh, I always, I grew up in my father's barber shop. And uh, I know the word politician is sort of a bad word now. But when I was growing up, it seemed to be revered. And I remember people came from all. My father was, you know, old-time barber. Barber's barber, nothing fancy. Uh, and the people from all walks of life came in there, uh, from the uh, average rank and file to the you know, pillars of the community. And I always noticed, that no matter who it was, about you know, being respectful. But I always noticed uh, it with barbers or bartenders, hairstyle people, people come to you and looking for advice and wisdom, and, and they need help on certain situations. So I used to watch that in the shop, and they'd say, Alphonse or Al, you know, Al the bar. Uh, who do I need to talk? My, my, my son's got an issue here, or we have an issue in a neighborhood. And he knew where to direct that, and usually, too, it was a, a community official, elected official. So I always thought it came across to me that uh, uh, politicians were there to you know, you wake up in the morning and say, what good can I do for my community, not for oneself? So I, the bug came very early for me, and then I 
was sort of always involved in it when I was in school with a student council or class president or doing this or that. And then I became involved in uh, campaigns. And uh, What's the first one you worked on? The first campaign I worked on uh, was uh, Ricky Roach, uh, uh, Rick Roach who was a state representative. We grew up in the, uh, well, he's a little bit older than me. We used to play basketball at his brother Joe's uh, house on Winnipeg Street. He used to let us use the, the court he had there. Any time, we always played hoop. So that, I was very young then, but the, the really campaign and the person who gave me my biggest, biggest break, and I was with her, uh, we had a bite the son, Mary Hurley. Mm -hmm. You know, I've uh, known Mary since I was 15 years old. So uh, she gave me my big break. But I started doing anything and everything from, uh, uh, you know, stamps on the envelope, putting signs up all the way to the point in time of, you know, helping uh, not run campaigns, but just strategize, do that. Then I finally said, why don't I take a shot myself? And I remember running in uh, 1997. And that was the at-large system, citywide, yeah. city council. It's always tough to break into. And we missed by s several hundred votes, and we made a, a hell of a run. And I didn't become dejected at that time. I, uh, you learn from adversity. You learn from loss. And I, I worked even harder, honed my message, knocked on tens of thousands of doors that I did then, and, and running from air, grassroots. And we nearly uh, came back in 99 and nearly topped uh, the ticket. And then uh, we had a good run on the council and, and then uh, decided, uh, had a different vision for the city. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and Charlie, Mayor Ryan, and I are, are friends. And we continue to, to, to work together, especially on libraries. I call him the godfather of the libraries. <laughs> I kid around with him. I said, you cut a hell of a deal with uh, Andrew Carnegie uh, many years ago on it. But we worked very well. But I we didn't decide. I had a different vision for the city. And, uh, well, Charlie, Charlie Ryan was right for the time, wasn't he? I mean, after receiving Well, we worked very closely together. you got to remember when the control board came in, and this is... You know, the control board has been gone for well over 10 years. Everybody thought once they left, the city would uh, fall off a cliff. We've done the exact opposite. But Mayor Ryan and I worked very closely. He was mayor at the time. I was city council president on the negotiations and, and uh, uh, working with the control board. There were some things that need to be done. There were other things that I, you know, we didn't, didn't agree with, but we never aired our dirty laundry out in public. We worked behind the scenes and... Uh, you know, helped uh, that, and then uh, you know. Now you look at the uh, the city, and uh, you know, I'm proud to say, uh, you know, have the highest bond ratings in the in the city's history. You've got to have your financial house uh, in order, uh, whether you're it's uh, you're dealing with a city, whether you're dealing with a business, or whether you're dealing uh, with pocketbook issues, running your own home. Sure. So that's that having financial stability and strength allows me to do the, uh, the sexy the sexy projects here in the city. So. Well, you talk about that, too. I mean, you think back. It, it wasn't all that long ago, and the city wasn't really, really big financial problems. Yeah. And then you look back to where you've been over the last seven or eight years yeah. now. And uh, I, I, for one, I, I can remember, I think it was after you were reelected in 2011. Yeah. A couple of days afterwards, I think you broached the idea, correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, about a casino in downtown Springfield. Yeah. And, and I was one of those at the beginning. Yeah. Thought, what is he, crazy? Well, I just couldn't envision it. Well, what happened at the time was that the legislation uh, that was uh, crafted uh, really gave a lot of control and dictation from the local community. So I had started changing the moniker of the city of Springfield. You know, people, oh, what do you expect the city of Springfield to why not Springfield? Sure. So, again, the legislation at the time uh, put across, you had Governor Patrick, the legislative uh, uh, leadership at the time, then with uh, uh, now its leader, uh, leader Wagner, uh, Joe Wagner. Yet uh, then it was uh, Senate uh, or President at the time, Stan Rosenberg, mm -hmm. and um, uh, uh, Speaker Dele The way it was crafted, it really indicated that we, the city, myself, could call the shot to say exactly what we wanted here and how we wanted to make an all in all uh, engulfing. Uh, uh, benefit to the entire city. So I said, why not? And we ran a very, uh, we've been commended. Uh, uh, we ran a very transparent process. I remember, uh, you know, my internal team at the time, uh, Kevin Kennedy, who has since retired, my chief development officer, Eddie Pakula, my city solicitor, 
and the rest of the team that I uh, had, my administration team. But we also realized that, um, you know, we're dealing with a different entity here. It's never been done before. So we brought in a specialist, and Sid Fraley came in from Chicago. They dealt with, with gaming. I'll never forget, Sid sat where you sat uh, about seven, eight years ago, and he said, Mr. Mayor, you got to be able to stay above it and keep your cool. They are going to accuse you of ev everything under the sun. Everything under the sun. And we did. You know, we ran a, a process where uh, we had two RFQs, two RFPs, er things online. At one time, I had six suitors looking to come to the city of Springfield. Mm -hmm. And the more competition, the better. It had better for me to drive a, uh, a, a, a more leverage, to drive a better deal for Springfield, Western Mass, and State. We did so well that um, I've had areas across the country that have come here to sit down with my team. The government of Japan has been here three times because now they're going, they're bringing in gaming, mm -hmm. and how they marvel how we ran the process, and how we were able to generate so much competition. So I'm very, very proud of that. And my whole big thing was about economic development and creating good-paying jobs, whether white-collar jobs or blue-collar jobs, sure. and the spin-off effects that have occurred. But I had, you know, I have a well, I had a well-oiled team. You were, you know, uh, you know what we went through on the tornado, yeah. and. Uh, um, and they came right at the beginning of all this. That's right. Yeah. They came, and and. Um, but it also kind of laid the groundwork. What happened over here? Yeah, the fourteen and a half acres, the the blue tarps all over the uh, the area, and, and thank God, uh, I know there was some deaths that occurred in in, in the Pioneer Valley. Thank God there were none here in Keep Springfield, but we had about you know we had some serious injuries and thirty two, thirty eight serious injuries, and of course it tore up. Devastated one third of the uh, the city, but what I had a great team. I mean, what kept us going twenty four seven? Um, uh, the team I had, and some of the people at the time that by my side, uh, you know, their homes or families that had been hit too. Uh, but we and the resiliency of the people kept us going. Yeah. They just it was uh, you know every time we were out, the majority of the time we were, we were out there on the streets. That was the other part. Of it. You were in the front of it. You had you had to be, you had in times of adversity, uh, he or she, your leader has to step forward with a good team, and um, you know I I love my family, and uh, I used to you know kid around many times. I, my daughters when they were younger, now they're in college, uh, well one finished college now working, another one is uh, uh, second year at AIC, and my oldest Cassandra uh, finished her masters at the Elms and healthcare administration management is, and is. Uh, Work, as a matter of fact, at Bay State, and Kiara is uh, going in this, as your son, educator. She's going to go into special ed, disabled education. But I used to kid around that I'd see my daughters first thing in the morning, and I might not see them till the, the next morning because you know, this job is, and I, I'm honored and privileged. I live it 24 7. I love it 24 uh, 7. Uh, you can't turn off uh, you know, when you're mayor. So the, the uh, tornado. Um, was really a, a, a defining moment. Even though we had those storm clouds, it turned into be a, uh, a silver lining in a way. Because I went after every dime I could get my hands on, whether reimbursement, uh, you know, from FEMA or uh, uh, economic development uh, uh, monies to come in. Uh, I'll never forget Nick Russo was the first FEMA chief to come here. He was a retired fire chief from the eastern part of the state. And he said, he said it publicly, too. And when we've been asked to speak in the area across the country, to tell you the truth, uh, with some of my people, he said, I've been to 80 natural disasters. And I've seen just natural disasters become man-made disasters because of the utter chaotic mismanagement. He says, you, Mayor Sarno, and your team will be used as an example on how to handle a situation. I hope we never have to go through it. Uh, but the relationships that were built on a federal, state, local level, not only governmental, uh, with the uh, the business community, all our nonprofits, the medical, military. I just had National Guard was in here today. To be, I'm using the sports analogy, you're in a huddle, and you got to surround yourself with good, knowledgeable people that'll tell you the pros and cons of that, and give you. A Part of my life, give you a kick in the ass when you need that kick in the ass, because you're making split-second decisions 
to save what well, structures or save people's lives. And I had a great I had a great team. So the, now when you look at somebody eye, eye to eye, now the relationships you just pick up the phone because they know when you give your word, your, your word's going to be good in these situations. I can remember I've, I've got this picture and it's one of my favorite pictures of you and I, the Friday night. After the after the tornado yeah. down in the south end. Yeah, you did a live broadcast. We live. I remember that. We were on. Uh, yeah, I remember just the that. Destruction behind us. It was. I, I remember. No matter where we went in the city, it was surreal. Yeah, it was. It was great word. It was surreal. I remember uh, uh, coming uh, uh, downtown. We had come, working with the state, we commandeered the Mass Mutual Center. We had about 400 families there because of the, 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 the hit there. And we had a LaSalle, but I remember coming down. It was either 2, 2.30 in the morning after we left the emergency preparedness. It was so, remember the day was so hot and humid. It was like a drip. It was dripping all. You had a blanket of sweat on you. And uh, I remember my men and my brave and dedicated uh, men and women in blue. And, and how many heroic saves were made by police and fired up. But... They had said to me, hey, Don, Mayor, 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 you got to come down, take a walk down South Main Street. So I did. And you used the word, uh, you know, the Twilight Zone, Rod Sterling, surreal. You're absolutely right. Downtown, many of our electrical lines are below ground. Right. So you had buildings that were completely shredded, but the lights were on, TVs were on. It was unbelievable. And then they told me, I don't know, I got home very late or early in the morning just to try to fresh up, get a couple hours sleep before. They said, East Forest Park, Mary, they said, you're not going to recognize it. Now I'm Springfield born, brown, and proud. I got to that Island Pond Road area. Yeah. It was complete, that area was complete devastation there. And that was about, I don't know if it was 5.30 or it's like 6 in the morning. And then uh, I went, but it was, it was, in New England, Dave, you've been around for a long time, well-respected, award-winning uh, uh, broadcaster. Yeah, okay, New England, you expect once in a while, maybe you get a blizzard. Maybe you get a, 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 a hurricane, uh, a nor'easter that you know, roars up the uh, east coast. Never in our wildest dreams would you ever expect now, you, you a tornado. Now, you touched on that, and I got to yeah, you, yeah. this is still one of my favorite yeah. <laughs> moments with you. The night of the October snowstorm. Oh my! Oh, that. And I. It was about midnight when you showed up at the DPW. The DPW. Yeah. And you're sitting in there. You were in the room by yourself. Yeah. On your flip phone. Yeah. <laughs> and I teased you about it. I still have that old flip phone did. there too, and I have a new old flip phone. But yeah. But I mean, that was another one. I mean, that was just in the same yeah. year. When you stop and think about it, it's like my goodness, what what else can happen? Yeah, I'll never forget. Yeah, you came up. At, at, <laughs> yeah. hey, I was working hard. It was about midnight. You yeah. came up. Forty came up, and uh, I'll never forget. Commissioner, now since retired, Police Commissioner Bill Fidget, great guy, uh, coming in there, and I can't, we're on air now, but he, he came in there and he went, Mayor, it is effing bad out there, you know, and uh, uh, yeah, that, that was another thing, when they, it happened, I remember Saturday, Al Schwalik, and since retired DPW director, gave me a call at home, uh, the situation has changed drastically, and because uh, when it started, it yeah, started, it came down hard, right? And it was pre, -hall you know, pre Halloween, late October, so the leaves, everything's still on the trees. So it was about two or two thirty in the afternoon, and power started going out. I remember yeah. at my house started it started going out, and it was, uh, and I'm not big on this computer or these uh, games they play, but it like pack, it was like a Pac Man game. It took me literally, and from my house, I'm in the Forest Park area, the off Tiffany Street. You know, maybe take me eight, ten minutes to get to DPW. With all the trees and power lines, it was like go up, back out, back. To, it took me literally 45 minutes to get up to uh, DPW at the time with our the command center we had there until we moved the, yeah. the next day to emergency preparedness. And uh, I never, yeah, I never forget Commissioner Fitch, and I never forget you coming in. And I didn't. My phone was. Going dead, and they found an old charger for me, and uh, so that people were affected. That was a good week. Yeah, people were affected as short as six days to ten days. I know I was affected. Uh, my house, we were out. I think it was a, a week. Yeah. But some people were eight, nine, ten days, and boy, I'll tell you what. Did you appreciate? 
electricity, and it was funny we're driving yeah, around we're the streets. Well, we <laughs> think the gas yeah, hot water, and, yes, and I didn't I didn't shave for ten days, uh, but I could never come in with That's a nice goatee like you had. <laughs> uh, but you, it was almost like a western when you were driving, no lights on, mm -hmm. and all if people had fireplaces, all you saw was smoke coming from there. Uh, their chimneys. Now you think that, that had to be. And we opened up Central, by the way. We did that on yeah. our own with Helen Carlton Harris. And yeah, we had sure. seven. Well, here's the thing. I'm, uh, uh, and we, resilience. we work well with the uh, Red Cross, all the providers. I, in the morning time, whether tornado or the nor'easter, every early morning I would have uh, anywhere from 28, 32 direct reports where everybody was in there from all walks of uh, fields yeah. in there, and we would troubleshoot immediately who needs this, boom, and then we hit hit the streets. So I remember the Red Cross, and we worked very well with the Red Cross. They had asked uh, if Central could be used as a regional shelter, and I said, "You are you telling me now if I get to certain capacity, I have to turn away my Springfield people?" I said, "Yes." I said, "Why?" Well, I, I can't do that. I, you know, I want to, I got to take care of my Springfield people sure. first. So um, we literally opened up our own with Helen Carlton Harris, Salvation Army. I remember we were putting cots and everything. We had about 700 people, families, staying there during the day, 400 at night. I had Sedesco, mm -hmm. who did my, does our culinary stuff for the schools and everything, come in there. And we received rave reviews how we ran that. Then we would get updates when power was coming back on and people could, would get treat you know go back to their homes and we worked very closely with not only uh, police and, and uh, fire but especially fire getting uh, you know we get uh, constantly did 40 was great we constantly did press conferences to update people on stuff and because surges power surges would occur sure. and that started fires so we had to make sure we got that out and, and uh, that had to be I always said that if, if the city of Springfield could get through that year you could get through it well, it's proven that the disaster recovery resiliency grant that was nationwide, I believe, I, I think I'm correct, we were the only standalone city to receive, I think it was 17.8 or 19, nearly $20 million on our own yeah. because of how we handled it. Yeah. As you look at that, I mean, that was a tough year. What, yeah. in your, in, in your, since 2007? Dave, speaking of that, do you yeah. remember when you did the, uh, Retrospective. I don't know if it was the, if the fifth year, year the yeah. following year. If it, we went, in the, we were at the van, the forty van, remember? And they somebody put in this the, the, the chair with the wheels. Risk. Oh, we had so many. This is funny. There's so many laughs. There was the chair in there. They had the wheels on it, and we were sli We were going to the. We were sliding all up. We had so many laughs. So many laughs. We did. We yeah, did. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt, no, but no, I, no, I, I always no, remember that. that. that we were sli yeah. That was. Fun. I remember meeting you down well, the South End Community Center, yeah. where you spent so many years. Yeah. We, I'll that. tell you what, we helped out thousands of uh, kids there. And I, when I, every time I walk in, I just was in there for the uh, uh, the bright nights ball to thank all our, our very generous business community and, and philanthropic uh, donors to bright nights. We did the, the thank you there before going to the Aria Ballroom at MGM. And they, they have the old South End community sign up there. It still brings a tear to my uh, I, and I'm glad that's part of the uh, MGM complex there. It really is when you see that. Yeah. And what, getting back to that, yeah. what, what a beautiful addition to the city. I mean, everything, I can remember walking down here for the first time. It was during, I think, Thanksgiving Parade, the after Thanksgiving yeah. Parade, the Balloon Parade. And going, it's like, you would never know that this has never been here. That's right. How well integrated it was. And, and yeah, I know there was a lot of disappointment where there wasn't that. What, the I, I, think, I think it, it, it's I, perfect. it is perfect because it, it, right into New England. And I know it, Western Massachusetts 40 has a, a, a satellite, the station there. And I think I know you, you guys were there covering it. When we did the, the tree lighting there mm -hmm. last holiday season, I think a new tradition has been begun. Yeah. You had thousands of people of all creed colors and backgrounds in that plaza area from all over the place from near and far it was such a festive and feel good situation and one thing i always wanted is i wanted an ice skating ring in downtown springfield and they have it uh, uh they have it down there i remember we we went down there on a saturday night yeah and uh and just stood and i we watched and i thought this is everything you wanted it to be right you were bringing Spin people downtown, and they weren't necessarily going in to gamble. No, spinoff effects, and uh, yeah. you know that's only that's only one really one quarter of the uh, 
$4.7 billion of economic development that's occurred in the city, and it creates a good four-letter word, uh, Dave, and I know for skiers they want to hear snow. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> Jobs, J-O-B-S, and then the spin-off to the vendors, materials, supplies, and, and when MGM brings in the big shows, whether at Mass Mutual Center or Symphony Hall, the restaurant tours and the bar are down. It, they're thriving. They love it. They we love the Red Sox winter weekend. Red Sox winter China. weekend. The T huge, huh? Birds, the local uh, ownership here, the Paul Picknells, and and really never any problems or never any issues. Uh, the only thing I'll tell you that drives me crazy or sleepless at night. And I think it does for any urban mayors in America. He or she. Uh, uh, this this gunplay with youth or gu gang violence that's the only thing drives me crazy and I know it many a times we are arresting and 40 reports on this we are arresting our brave and dedicated police officers are in, uh, arresting uh, these individuals three four times and these are violent repeat criminal you offenders yeah what the hell does it take to keep them locked up some are doing it now the last three or four us are bracelets and monitors on so I'm going to continue to push my bail legislation. And I'm going to continue to work with Governor Baker. He has the dangerous legislation. There's the same 1% or 2% people creating this. So I'm all for second chances affirmed, if not a hideous crime, and empowerment. But any, everywhere I go in, in our neighborhoods across the city, no matter what creed, color, background, they'll go, Mayor, Sarno, Dom, keep doing, we want you know, quality of life. And we've knocked down you know, overall crime by 45% uh, here in the last four or five years. But those are the things that drive me crazy. So, Do you think, going yeah. back now, and, and I've always, I've looked back, and I could be very yeah. wrong about this, but I always saw the, of, of the big cities like Springfield or Boston, whatever else, when they decided to start busing, yeah. and when they decided to stop the cops walking the beat. It, busing, to me, destroyed neighborhoods. Those, those neighborhoods that Springfield was built yeah. upon, and taking the cop off the street, they didn't know face to face, and putting him in a cruiser because that's that was what they did. So we're almost it's back to the future in a way. Yeah. Our C three policing, which has been nationally recognized, is, is really getting back to the the neighborhoods and working with the residents, uh, the businesses, the nonprofits, the churches, religious, being part of the solution. And, and then, I, of course, I also created an ordinance flex squad. Uh, quality of life uh, flex squat people love that and then with the on the busing and I know when that started my brother my youngest my younger brother Alphonse Funzi ended up going to the Berry School which you, Brian Robbins principally had a you know he had no issues at all and sure. matter of fact my bro, uh, my father went to school with uh, uh, his brother at the old uh, uh, Buckingham Junior High so now we're getting back to uh, the neighborhood schools and I you know six six hundred and sixteen million dollars of new and renovated schools the most in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and then we're given some choice too where people say we I want to go to the uh, the uh, uh, conservatory of the arts we now we have on State Street or I want to go to the specialty school but we've gone more it's back to the future and um, so we give more options uh, more neighborhood schools walking but you'd be surprised at how many parents want their kids on a bus yeah. at times. So to, but we're getting back to more of the neighborhood schools and getting the C3 is more of the neighborhood model of, uh, of policing. Uh, it's building trust again. Isn't it? Right. Yeah. It is building trust. And I, I just think that we have, I think we have very good and, and mutually respectful relations with our residents and the, and the uh, police department, but like in any profession, any profession, 99, 98% of the time, uh, things are done well and, and uh, good things happen. You're always going to have those issues that crop up in any profession yep. that will uh, and have been and continue to be uh, uh, dealt with. As you deal with them, that's yeah. as you, I, I can't believe we've been here for almost half yeah. an hour. Uh, really? Well, you're, you, you give such a, it's so <laughs> relaxing and comfortable with you. But uh, uh, it, it, as you look at what, it, as mayor, your greatest, what do you see up to this point in time, your greatest achievement? I think my, a uh, uh, couple things, but uh, leading us, my team, you know, a team, uh, leading us through those uh, uh, 
devastating times of the, the tornado, the EF3 tornado. And, um, you know, we had the freak tornado. The tornado, I think that was a big defining moment. I think also nothing can uh, move forward uh, without financial stability and strength been able uh, to do that. Um, but I think a defining moment of the, the tornado. Yeah. The tornado was the, uh, the biggest thing because many people just, again, with that Chief Nick Russo, the first FEMA chief that came here, he talked about areas that have gone through natural disasters years ago that are still trying to uh, recover. I think that was a major uh, defining moment. And I think it also led to, um, again, er any urban mayor in America, he or she, will tell you three things to knock down the vicious cycle of poverty and public safety issues. One is f family, I'm familiar, which sometimes is difficult to get into. 1A, education. 1B, jobs, put our people to work. If you look at all the fronts, on uh, finances, economic development, our schools, quality of uh, uh, life issues, public safety, uh, we have made tremendous gains. There's much more to be done, don't get me wrong. And uh, in Springfield is a very caring city. We, we accept and take everyone and everyone. And I many a times will ask my you know, surrounding areas, uh, uh, more fluent areas, you know, we, we, we could use a little bit of uh, help at times here. But I, I think if you see the major thing, because, you know, you faced a, a major natural disaster. That's right. And uh, sometimes places never recover from that. So I was, um, again, I had a great team, and uh, I think that was a major defining moment uh, uh, of my administration. You, uh, and I wanted to touch on this, you took a lot of heat when you backed <laughs> Charlie Baker, for, and many things. Yeah. But back Charlie Baker from re-election. And one of the, the beauties I see of yeah. small-town government yeah. is that you're not running as a Republican or a Democrat. No. You're running as Don Sarno or right. whatever else. And um, it, I, I look at that, and when I see what's going on in Washington, and I see that, it's like, this is what it's supposed to That's be. That's right. In Washington, you see this. Here in Massachusetts, Springfield, you see this. Uh, I'm a Democrat, but I'm a centrist. I'm a moderate Democrat. Much in the way that Governor Baker is on the Republican side. And I've always said, I don't give a... Well, I can't say it. This is not on broadcast. You can okay, say I don't give a... Yeah. If, <laughs> if, if it, a good idea comes uh, that helps out uh, my residents and business community, city of Springfield, whether it's a Democrat, Republican, or Independent, if it's something good, common sense, yeah. we're going to do it. Governor Baker, Lieutenant Governor Politeman, they've been fantastic to me. We've struck up a really kinship, a great relationship. So when it came to, uh, and I, I backed plenty of Democrats sure. before, but I'm old school. Somebody has been good to me. It's been good to the city. And uh, when they asked me, uh, Mayor, you know, uh, so that was my uh, whole point of uh, contention uh, there. And I'll tell you what's really killing us, government, and why pe good people don't want to be involved in government anymore or not want to go through it. And I don't, eh, I don't mind constructive criticism. I know I'm under a microscope. But you have these, and I've said it many times, you have these fringe, fringe extreme groups, whether on the left or on the right, that scream the loudest, but nothing gets done. I'm hoping whether local, federal, and uh, state elections, I think a message is going to be sent that more people are going to come more back to the moderate, centrist, common sense. What's good for the community, not who yells and screams uh, uh, the most. And I think that is really uh, that has really hurt both uh, parties. So I look to say, listen, I'm not an Einstein. I try to be knowledgeable. I try to surround myself with people. I have to be like a general practitioner, general doctor, family doctor, know a little bit about everything, but surround yourself with people who are knowledgeable, tell you the pros and cons, and give you that kick in the ass when you, you need it internally. But I think people, and, and they, you know, a lot of times you don't hear them scream the loudest. They want good government decisions done. And that's what I base my thing. I, get, I know I can't make everybody happy. Base your decisions on good government. But I think more and more people... And what is realistic? And what is sustainable? I mean, some of the things that are coming out on either side yeah. are pie in the sky. Yeah. You know, the mayor, i got to balance budgets. In, in, in D.C., you can pontificate for a year. And say, 
if uh, Mrs. Smith or, or Mrs. Brown or Mrs. O'Leary or Mr. Stantanello calls me about, I got a goddamn pothole on my street, what are you going to do about it? To dealing with billion dollar projects. And the worst thing a mayor has to do, and I said it the other day when I spoke to some youth groups, is uh, no matter how much power somebody might think a mayor or myself has, uh, when something bad happens to a family, uh, somebody's injured, somebody's hurt, somebody's killed, and you, get a, you have to make that visit uh, to the home. you got to make that visit to the hospital. you got to pay your respects at a funeral or a wake. That's difficult to do. So there are some days, Dave, that I want to bang my head against the wall. There are other times I want to bang other people's heads against the wall. But what keeps me going is you run into people at times. You get a card. You get a letter. Remember, hey, thank you. My grand you helped my grandchild out on that. My mom. Hey, the neighbor. Hey, that's been solved in the neighborhood. Genuinely, genuinely. Thing. That keeps you. Uh, uh, that keeps you going. And, and you've been, Dave, and you, you've always been great to me. I think coming from my side to your side, the best compliment you can give on the journalistic side is fairness. And that's all, all I, that's all I've ever asked for, whether it's a good issue or a, a challenging issue, just fairness. And I don't know, you've been around for a, a long time. This age of reality TV, Dave, I can't stand it. I tell the young people all the time. It highlights the negativity of society, especially of our young people. I mean, if it bleeds, yeah. it leads now. So if there's, you know, some type of uh, the lines are blurred balance, and uh, I know, you know, with the age of the internet, and I mean, I kid around. I still have an etch a sketch over there, but uh, <laughs> still works. everything is is, is got to be instant. instant. And sometimes, you know, you're a veteran, well-respected uh, 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 broadcast journalist. Sometimes a lot. Believe me, Dave, there's a lot of things I'd like to say at times sure. during a situation, but I can't. I can't say it at times because I, there's a process. Though people seem to like it, but it gets me in trouble. I'll wear my heart on my sleeve, and I mean what I say and, and say what I mean. But you get it's just who's get it on without double-checking things or, or uh, editing things, and then people get that, that blitz, blitz message out, and it, you got to work ten times to uh, uh, be able to respond to that message. Now you've, I think, I, I look at your success and your margin of victory year after year after year. Yeah, as well. yeah nearly that 80%. You, you've never looked beyond being there in Springfield. You know, knock on wood, I've been asked many a times, why don't you do this, why don't you do that, why don't you run for that? And again, I never say never, Dave, but if this is the last elective office I hold, I'll be happy. Yeah. I'll be happy. And uh, there's a... To be mayor, you, you never lose that moniker of being mayor. I mean, sometimes kids in the morning go and say, hey, Mr. Mayor, you're not coming back. Um, but I think uh, Lyndon Johnson, President Johnson, said the toughest job in America, being a, a, you know, a mayor of whether it's a, a mid-sized city or above, because you got to act. You can't dwell on your victories for too long because no. there's always another fire to put out. Yeah. First interview I ever did. Ever was it Frank Friedman? Frank Friedman, Judge Friedman. My father cut his hair for years. But he was mayor of the city. Mayor of the city of Springfield and yeah. big Red Sox fan. I used to sit in the, I'd be in the shop, and those two, they, you know what their dream job would have been would it, for him, right, Dana? The manager of Red Sox. How the hell could he have made this move? This uh, 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 that's all they would talk about. But Judge Friedman, sure, my father cut his hair for years. That was fifty years ago. Yeah. So to be able to sit down with you today yeah. and, and to do this and to do what I wanted to for a long time yeah. is just you and I sit and talk. It's, it's been a yeah. pleasure. No, oh, it's been my pleasure. Let me tell you something. It's the best meeting of my day today. <laughs> and, I, and Dave looks good with the goatee. I know, you know, when he's on broadcast, you couldn't do this, you couldn't do that. But I don't know. He could be setting a trend here. He could. Look yeah. at Wyckoff. Yeah. He's got the full beard. Yeah, it looks, he looks very professorial with that, too. Very yes. professorial. You, yeah, you tell Jacob I said hello and the, rest, the whole crew there. And, uh, but one, one final question. Sure. What would uh, Dominic Sarno like his legacy to be? I'd like my legacy to be um, that whenever my run is done, whether it's of my uh, uh, decision or the people's decision, that they say, um, boy, and I say kid because I, I hearken back to Tommy, 
Manino, God rest his soul. And I, Tommy was Mayor Manino was here six months before he passed too. Um, when, I, I didn't go to Boston that much, but if something good to the city, I would go. So he used to always call me the the kid. And fast forward, Marty Walsh, when Marty became mayor out there, when they came out there, we were going to a, a New England Gun Summit or violent anti violence summit, and he, he called me. Uh, Sir, and I go, geez, Marty. He goes, well, oh, Dom, you've been around for a little while now. But <laughs> no, so I always go back. If they say at the end of my run, uh, hopefully of my, my calling, boy, the kid did a hell of a job uh, not only bringing Springfield back but moving Springfield forward. Uh, would I love to make a million dollars for my, my family? Uh, sure. But that would mean a million dollars to me, a million dollars to me. All right. Thank you, Dave. It was great. My pleasure. With the go team, he looks good. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this insight into Springfield Mayor Dominic Sarno. Let me know what you think. And if you have any ideas for future guests you'd like to see on this podcast, send them along to me to dave.madsen, M-A-D-S-E-N, at westernmassnews.com. Next week, I sit down with a very good friend who I've known for over 20 years, Danny Eaton, the producing director and the founder of the Majestic Theater in West Springfield. That's next week. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and for listening. I'm Dave Matson. Hope you enjoyed even better Western Mass.